All right, so in today's lecture, we're gonna be looking at proteins. Uh, remember, these are macromolecules, uh, which means they're large molecules. Remember, they are organic compounds. And remember, they are organic because we have carbon uh, and we also have hydrogen here. Uh, proteins are also made of oxygen and nitrogen. And when we look at some of the materials that make up proteins, we will talk about some specific functional groups. Uh, proteins, again, are polymers, and they are made up of monomers called amino acids. Okay, proteins have many different functions, and we're gonna kind of focus on these uh, items here. So they're gonna control the rate of chemical reactions. Those are gonna be enzymes, and we're gonna have a separate lecture uh, on those in the future. They're also used to regulate cell transport. So we have transport proteins that uh, move materials in and out uh, and prevent other materials from doing such. They can also be used to form bone and muscle, and they are also gonna be found as components of the immune system. Uh, here you're talking about antibodies. So taking a look at Proteins, again, we said they are polymers and they're gonna be made up of amino acids. And those amino acids are therefore going to be called monomers. And remember that it is a polymer because we're gonna to put together lots of different monomers to make that polymer. Uh, in this case, those monomers are amino acids. And again, uh, if we take a look here, we have a central carbon. Remember that carbon can form four covalent bonds, and that's gonna be illustrated by these four black lines here. Each of these black lines is gonna be a shared pair of electrons. Uh, we have our first reactive group over here. This is gonna be the amino group, and we can remember it's the amino group because the word amino has an N in it, and in this case, the N here stands for nitrogen. We also have a hydrogen here, and then we have our second reactive group, over here called the carboxyl group. And this is gonna be the same carboxyl group that we saw when we were looking at the fatty acid tails on lipids. Okay, so we have our carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then we have our carbon bonded to an OH group uh, as well. And then our third reactive group is gonna be this R side chain. And this is gonna be the thing that's actually different from one amino acid to the next. Uh, this is going to be the thing that is going to determine how the amino acids interact with each other, and this is going to be the thing that's going to help to start make our uh, protein structures and the shapes that they ultimately end up in. All right, so there are 20 different R groups, which means there are 20 different amino acids. Now, we said that proteins are polymers of amino acids, and so how do we put these amino acids together? Well, that's gonna be that same process that we looked at previously called dehydration synthesis. Another name for dehydration synthesis is a condensation reaction because in dehydration synthesis, you are actually losing a molecule of water. Uh, you're not actually losing it, it's not disappearing, it's just being pulled out of the two molecules in order to get them to uh, stick together. So if we take a look here, we've got our first amino acid bonding to our second amino acid. And notice that in the carboxyl end, we're going to lose an OH group. And on the amino end, we're going to lose the hydrogen uh, of an opposite amino acid. These R groups are going to vary from one amino acid to the next. And so for our illustration purposes, we're just going to put these as an R just to kind of keep it simple. So two amino acids being put together through that process of dehydration synthesis, removing that molecule of water, we're going to create a bond called a peptide bond. Okay, so a peptide bond is what's gonna be used to hold uh, two amino acids together, and this is a covalent bond. So these two amino acids are sharing uh, a pair of electrons. And in this diagram here, we create something called a dipeptide. If we wanted to add uh, further amino acids, we could make a tripeptide, and then ultimately we would start to build our polypeptide when we put all of these amino acids together. Now this process is going to occur in a structure called a ribosome. Uh, that's going to be one of your cellular organelles that we're going to be discussing in a future unit. So as we build this strand of amino acids, we start to produce what we consider our primary structure. So looking at the top here, we've got our primary structure of our protein. 
and it's simply going to be all the amino acids put together. Each of these uh, blue circles here is representing an amino acid, and these little lines in between would represent the covalent or peptide bond uh, that is formed. Now, the amino acid sequence is going to form the primary structure, but how those uh, amino acids interact with each other is going to form our secondary protein structure, which in this case we are going to have either beta pleated sheets or an alpha helix. So you can kind of imagine one side of a DNA molecule being a helix. So this is our alpha helix here. And this is going to be due to the hydrogen bonding uh, between the amino acids okay, and how they're going to uh, interact. Now we then, once we have our beta pleated sheets and our alpha helices, we can actually get a more complex structure called tertiary structure. And this is gonna be due to the interactions of the side chains. So this is where the R groups come into play. Uh, this is where we're talking about uh, possible disulfide bridges. We're talking about hydrophobic and hydrophilic uh, interactions between the different amino acids. Uh, if you are in an aqueous solution or a water-based solution, you may have hydrophobic ends uh, on your amino acids, which are trying to embed themselves inside the protein somewhere, whereas uh, hydrophilic uh, ends may find themselves on the outside. And that movement and reactivity between them is what's going to cause that protein to have its specific shape. And in proteins, shape is going to be related to function. So that's an important thing to remember that shape is related to the function. If you change the shape of the protein, you're going to ultimately change its function. Now, once we have our tertiary structure, we can actually build more complex proteins by binding several of these tertiary proteins together. In this case, we have two proteins. Uh, but we could have three or four. Uh, an example of one that has four different protein chains is going to be hemoglobin, and that's going to be the protein that is responsible for, for transporting oxygen throughout the body. Hemoglobin is going to be a blood protein. So this is going to be due to your hydrogen bonding, your disulfide links, your hydrophobic and hydrophilic interactions uh, with the protein structures. Okay. Uh, so this, again, has been your brief introduction into proteins. Uh, once you guys view this, if you have any questions, bring those into lecture, and we can expand upon those, and I'll see you guys in class.